My name is Angie and this is Pepper. I've been involved with Helping Paws since 2006 when I received my first service dog, Milo. And then I received my second service dog, Baylor, in the spring of 2014. And now I am receiving Pepper. Pepper moved in um, on September 30th, which is not quite a week from right now. And things have gone exceptionally well. She's just a really, really great great dog, adapts very well. I work as a clinical psychologist at Abbott Northwestern Hospital and so our days are pretty active. Um, we encounter a lot of different people, um, situations that um, she's just done fabulous with. There are times where she needs to basically lay down and rest quietly while I'm in a session with somebody. Um, and then there's, there's just times where we can be more active going up and down the halls, ways of the hospital, and um, people always love to see a dog. Uh, we used to have pet therapy dogs that come in and that has um, been suspended while the pandemic is going on. So people are really, really missing sort of that, their dogs and even the pet therapy dogs that come in. So I think even having the presence of a dog um, at work will be beneficial for a lot of people, not just myself, but the staff that I work with and also patients. Um, the things that Pepper helps me with the most are probably retrieving items that I drop and also opening um, doors and turning on off light switches. Um, I encounter those obstacles several times during my just my daily life and work and uh, work day. Um, the companionship that she brings to is not a skill that's necessarily trained, but it's something that um, is definitely priceless to be able to have um, just this, you know, sweet creature that uh, depends on you um, for everything, which is nice because when you're so used to depending on other people for, for things that have something that now depends on you, you, you feel um, less needy, um, especially when you have a disability and you require the assistance with things from other people. Um, being able to have something that you can take care of, um, you know, is really, really meaningful. I have been without a dog for the past year, and it is a big change in your life to go from having um, a dog that's with you 24 hours a day that you can depend on, that you know is going to be able to help you be more independent, and then all of a sudden they're not with you anymore, and, um, I find that obviously getting around physically can be a lot more difficult. Um, I don't, if I drop something, I don't have the dog that can uh, just pick it up and we be on our way. Having a service dog by, by my side really breaks down some of those social barriers. The social isolation that sometimes people with disabilities feel, they can feel kind of invisible when they're out in public, even though myself, I have a very visible um, physical disability but I've noticed when I haven't had, um, when I've been in between service dogs that it seems like I don't really get acknowledged um, as much by people passing by or people don't necessarily go out of their way to interact with me. But when I do have um, my service dog by my side, they, um, you know, they come up and, and it might start out as a conversation about my service dog and what um, she does for me. But a lot of times then it just leads to having a conversation about life in general and, and different things. So it really opens up those doors. And I cannot say enough great things about Helping Paws as a organization, even just being a recipient of these wonderful service dogs. I also served on the board of directors for nine years. And two of those years I served as president of the board of directors. And it's just an amazing organization from the people that work there from the people that um, volunteer, the foster home trainers that train these wonderful dogs for two and a half years, the caretaker homes that start the dogs out with the litters of puppies that go into the program. Um, you know, there's not really enough words to describe just how much Helping Paws has impacted my life in a very, very positive way. My name is Karen Hupp and this is Pepper and I'm a volunteer foster home trainer at Helping Paws. Pepper's the third dog that I've trained for Helping Paws. I had, my first one was Watson, 
who um, was born in 2011, and my second one was Briar from the Bee Litter, and she was born in 2014, I believe. Um, and this is Pepper, so my third full-time dog. Pepper's a little bit of a bossy girl. Um, she was the wildest and bravest of the litter, I've been told. Um, she was the one that always tried all the new little toys first in, in the playpen and um, kind of lorded it over all the others, led the way. And she's still brave and confident. Um, she's been a joy. I am beyond thrilled that Angie chose Pepper, or maybe that Pepper chose Angie. I'm not sure which. My goal, I number one, I want all the dogs that are placed to be happy in their job. I think she will be. Um, and I was telling Angie a little bit earlier that um, as foster home trainers, we always have some self-doubt. Is my dog good enough? Are they gonna behave? We worry about that a lot. And so my goal is for her to behave and to be good enough and maybe to even exceed expectations. But I think she will. It's really fun to do this. It's my most fun volunteer activity that I do. Um, I found a, really a home here and I found long lasting friends. When we um, go to class, it's always fun. The instructors make it fun and I look forward to class every week. And during COVID when we didn't have class for so many weeks, it, was, it felt like a loss. It really felt harder to do this thing we do without that um, constant interaction. If you have any inclination to be a foster home trainer, do it, you will not be disappointed. My first service dog, Milo, I ended up um, falling during a transfer when I was home alone and broke my femur. And the, the dogs are trained the skill, um, get the phone. And um, unfortunately I was, like my body and my wheelchair were in the way of the phone that I had trained Milo to get. So I was trying to figure out how am I gonna get help and I had Milo bark, but no one really responded. I was living in an apartment building. And then I have a um, lifeline pendant that you can press to get help. But of course it was um, attached to my wheelchair and not, you know, around my neck like it should have been, but I couldn't reach it. And so I had Milo, I grabbed his collar and I gave him the command tug and back. And he was able to move me enough where I could reach my lifeline and um, summon help. And, um, you know, it's really hard to put into words just how much this gift means to me. And I, I appreciate everything that um, the foster home trainers do for these dogs because they really are a life-changing gift. And just the dedication that the foster home trainers like Karen spend two, two and a half years training these dogs and giving them, you know, a loving start and then following through with uh, the training on a weekly basis. It's pretty amazing how much dedication um, goes into training one of these dogs. And I know, you know, Karen has done a wonderful job training Pepper. And when I have a service dog by my side, it feels like my, my life is complete. And then without one, it's sort of like, you feel like you've lost a limb. So now having Pepper again in my life, I feel like finally my life is back to um, being more complete.